Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Today we will have a look at the free-to-play game from Hi-Res Studios, which is currently in early access and goes by the name of Paladins. You might have heard of that game in the last few weeks, because it does have quite a few similarities with Overwatch. But we are not interested in the design of the characters or the gameplay. What we want to know is how good or bad its networking or netcode is when compared to Overwatch. Now, if you've seen any of my previous netcode analysis videos, then you can use the annotation or the link in the description to skip to the results of the tests. If this is the first time that you watch one of my videos, then you should keep watching, as I'm going to explain a few basics now that you will need to know in order to understand the results of these tests. Let's start with the ping. Now, what is that and where does the term come from? If you've seen the movie The Hunt for Red October, then you might remember that scene where Sean Connery gave the order to check the distance to the US submarine with one active sonar ping. The way this works is that your ship sends out an audio signal which then gets reflected by other objects in the water. And on your ship you have microphones which then hear that reflection. If you then measure the time between sending the audio signal and receiving the reflection, then you can calculate the distance between you and the object. The ping that we talk about for network connections is pretty much the same thing. Your device sends an ICMP echo request to another network device like a game server, which then sends an ICMP echo reply back to your device. Now, when you measure the time between sending the request and receiving the answer, then this gives us the ping or round trip time of the data. So the ping tells us how long the data has to travel through the copper and fiber optic cables to reach the other device. And the longer it takes the data to get to its destination, the bigger the difference between what we see on our monitor and what the other players see on theirs. Which is what we call lag. So when I jump, then this information takes some time to reach the server, and then the other client. With short distances between the players, this delay or lag is also very short. However, the bigger the distance between the clients, the longer it will take until they receive an update on what is going on. So the higher your ping, the more you will lag, which means that you have a bad experience. But it's not just the player with the high ping that suffers. Depending on how strong the lag compensation is in a game, the high ping player can also give the low ping player a bad experience. But that we will have a look at a bit later in this video. So the distance between our client and the server defines how long it takes data to travel between them. Which means that our lag cannot get lower than that since we would have to break the laws of physics to speed up the electrons or photons that are used to communicate with the server. What adds an extra delay on top of the travel time of our data is how frequently we send and receive it. So when we send and receive updates 30 times per second, then there is more time between the updates than when we send and receive 60 updates per second. So by sending and receiving more updates per second, you can decrease the additional delay that is added on top of the travel time of your data. But where is that data coming from? This is where the term tick or simulation rate comes into play, which is how many times per second the game processes and produces new data. So when you have a tick or simulation rate of 30, then this will cause more delay than when you use a tick rate of 60, which also allows update rates of 60 Hz then. Now, which update rates does Paladins use? To find out, I used Wireshark to capture my network traffic while I was playing a match. When I then look at the delta time between the packets, then we can find out that every 13 milliseconds we send a data packet to the server, and about every 37 milliseconds we receive a data packet from the server. This means that we are looking at update rates of 76 and 27 Hz. So Paladins is using different rates for the client send and receive rate, which does increase the delay between players. However, it's not the only game that does that. Overwatch, in example, is still using different rates on console, while on PC it sends and receives updates 63 times per second since August, which does decrease the delay between players. What I can't answer is which tick rate Paladins uses. It might run its simulations at 76Hz and then only send 27 updates per second to the clients. Or the server could also just run 27 simulations per second, where it then processes multiple data packets that it received from the clients. If you want to reduce your server load, then this is what you would want to do. But there's no way for me to tell what Paladins uses exactly. However, what I can tell you is how much delay two players experience when they play on the same server. So to test this, I use a high-speed camera, two PCs where each of them has its own fiber internet connection, and 144Hz gaming monitors on which the game runs at 150 frames per second, which Paladins limits your frame rate to. 
to measure the delays between the players I point my high speed camera at the monitors and then fire 20 shots with player 2. Inside the high speed recording I then look for the frame where I see that player 2 fired his gun and then I count the frames until I see the gunfire on the monitor of player 1. In addition to this gunfire test I also did two movement tests. In the first one player 2 jumps and I count the frames until I see the player model jump on the monitor of player 1. In the second test player 2 moves to the side and then I count the frames until I see his player model move on the monitor of player 1. All of these tests were done 20 times which then led to the following results. With a ping of 23 milliseconds for both players, I measured a longest delay of 75 milliseconds, an average of 67 milliseconds and a lowest delay of 55 milliseconds, which is a quite good result when compared to Overwatch which uses a send and receive rate of 63 hertz on PC. The results from the movement tests are quite interesting, because even though Paladins is still a bit slower than Overwatch, you will notice that the delay difference between the gunfire and the movement is lower in Paladins than in Overwatch. If the developers would use the same rate of 76Hz for the send and the receive rate of the client, then Paladins might even be able to beat Overwatch in these tests. So the delays in Paladins are quite low, but how does it handle players which have a very high ping? If you want to know your ping to the server then you just have to press the F9 key, which will then enable this overlay here that shows you your frame rate, your ping and how long it takes the game to draw a new image on your monitor, which is the result of your frame rate. Now when the shooter has a very high ping, which can be the result of connecting to a server that is very far away or an issue with his connection that causes a ping spike, then the lag compensation causes that the low ping player receives that damage very far behind cover, which is not a good experience for the low ping player. When we look at Battlefield 4 then the lag compensation causes that the player will get his hit confirmed by the server as long as he has a ping of less than 250 milliseconds. Once his ping is higher than that the server will simply reject his hit, which means that the high ping player sees the impact animation and the blood splatter but he will not get the hit marker and the shot will not deal any damage. This is what many players refer to as dusting. So why does the server reject the hit in this situation once the shooter has more than 250 milliseconds ping? As we all know the distance between the player and the server causes that the perspective of the server differs from the perspective of the player. How much it differs depends on how long the data needs to travel between them or how high the ping of the player is. So when the shooter has a ping of 250 milliseconds then he sees our low ping player here, while the server sees him here and the low ping player sees himself here. The server will stop to register the hit once the difference between where the server sees the target player and where the shooter sees him gets bigger than this. That happens when the ping of the shooter increases to more than 250 milliseconds in this example or when the target moves faster, which is why Battlefield games use two different lag compensation or frame history time values, one for infantry combat and one for vehicle combat. If you would use the infantry combat lag compensation or frame history time value for vehicle combat too, then you would get constant dusting in dogfights because jets move a lot faster than infantry players. A few of you might remember that there was a bug in Battlefield 4 last year in September which caused that exact issue. So I would be really happy if more games would follow the example of Battlefield 4 and apply a limit to their lag compensation. However some abilities in Paladins work differently. In the following examples I will use an overlay that shows you at which point I press the right mouse button. So when I want to grab a player while my ping is very low then I just have to press the right mouse button when the player is inside my crosshair. When I do the same with a very high ping then you will notice that there is a long delay between pressing the right mouse button and my character throwing the hook at him. This is because this action is done server side. So if I want to grab the enemy player then I have to press the right mouse button much earlier in order to compensate for my high ping. This design ensures that a high ping player is unable to grab a low ping player far behind the wall, which is a quite good solution for that specific ability. What I also noticed during my tests is that Paladins uses very simple hitboxes, which you can see in these examples here. I'm not sure if this is done on purpose or if that's just one of the things that will change in the near future because after all Paladins is still in early access. So I hope that you enjoyed this netcode analysis of Paladins and if you like this kind of niche content where I take a look at the inner workings of video games and show you how these affect your experience then you can help me to cover the costs of this channel by supporting me through Patreon. The link is in the description below. So if you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. 
Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.